Hi, this is Frank Prendergast for Daily Extra. I'm here with Dr. Daryl Tan, an infectious disease doctor at St. Mike's. Thanks for being with us. Absolutely, thanks. Let's start off with getting a sense of where PrEP is at in Canada uh, in far as the approval process goes. So in terms of the regulatory approval for PrEP in Canada right now, the situation is actually that it's it's simply not been approved in in Canada um, for for that indication. That being said, because it has been approved in other countries, in in the United States in particular, and because a lot of the research has started to be disseminated to to relevant uh, audiences, clinicians, patients, and policymakers in uh, around the world in the last few years, um, it it is starting to be used off-label in Canada. I know people are anxious to start it, Mm -hmm. at least some people are anxious to start it. When do you think it will be approved in Canada? What kind of forecast can you give us? One of the important considerations to be aware of here is that um, uh, approval for a medication, a prescription medication by regulatory authorities like Health Canada in Canada, as is the case in many other countries around the world, is actually a process that is dependent upon an application being submitted by the manufacturer of that product. And Gilead, the manufacturer of Truvada, to this date, to my knowledge, has actually not submitted an application for approval in Canada. So there is not actually a a current plan for regulatory uh, approval of PrEP in Canada. Why would they have not applied for this? That's a question that I think only the manufacturer themselves can can speak to. I can't really speak to uh, why they may not have submitted an application at this time. Okay. Um, Now, people are clearly on uh, Truvada uh, being used as PrEP Mm -hmm. um, in Canada but it's only available off-label. That's right. Um, So clinicians can prescribe it for not the purpose that it's being used for. Can you maybe explain the process? Sure. So uh, Truvada is an existing HIV medication that has been approved in Canada for several years, and it's widely used already uh, and has been for a number of years for the treatment of HIV infection, for, for established HIV infection. And that's the, uh, that's the approval that's already been granted by Health Canada for, for how it, that medication can be used. And it's for that reason that we have access to the medication in this country. That being said, PrEP is a, is a brand new uh, usage of that existing drug, what we call in medicine a new indication uh, for that existing drug. And uh, until such time as it is approved for that indication, for that specific purpose of prevention in Canada, it would be by definition, uh, any use of it for this purpose would be by definition off-label. What that really means is that a clinician who is prescribing it is doing so uh, on their own, based on their own judgment, their own knowledge of the scientific literature, and their own judgment that this is an appropriate thing to do for a, a particular patient, a particular individual. What are the dangers of this? Uh, One of the main issues is that when things are not um, approved by a regulatory body, we really are relying on individual physicians, individual prescribers, being aware of the literature enough to uh, make informed decisions about about what to do. So you could imagine that there might be a little bit less uh, standardization across the board in terms of how it might be implemented by individual providers. Um, uh, a second related issue might be that there simply might be less providers who are going to bother to keep themselves on top of the literature, to go to the scientific literature, review the medical journals themselves, and decide what is best for individual patients. And perhaps a downstream implication of that might be that many people who some would judge might benefit from this intervention might not even be aware of its existence or, or have very much access to it. Uh, and that's both from a, from a clinical perspective, in other words, a provider might not say, hey, this might be an, an, an option that you should think about or you might not be aware of that we can talk about. It's also potentially an issue from uh, a financial access uh, a perspective. If something is not officially approved by a regulatory in, uh, body in, in, a, in a given jurisdiction, it becomes difficult for that to be uh, accessed in the absence of uh, private drug insurance. If Gilead was to put the application forward, um, for using Truvada as uh, pre-exposure prophylactics. Uh, uh, would it be a pretty easy process? Would, would this happen very quickly because it's been approved? Because the FDA has approved it in the United States. I'm not sure of other countries, but there has been precedent sent. And I mean, it's been years. <laughs> it's been being used for at least two years now. Mm-hmm. Would, would it be a pretty straightforward process? Regulatory approval for medications by Health Canada typically is a process that um, takes uh, several months at a time. One could speculate that in this particular case, because it's an existing approved drug, because it has been approved in other countries based on scientific literature that we know is pretty robust, one could imagine that that process would be accelerated in this situation.